The Arab-Israeli conflict is the complicated issue of two different groups of people wanting the same piece of land over a long, complicated history full of fighting and land transfers. The Palestinians claim that Israel stole land from their home country of Palestine. However, Palestine was never a sovereign nation. It was merely the name of a region, just how North America is not a country, it is a region. The conflict is complicated, and I'll do my best to show the facts and give some of my opinion. To start off, I'll talk about Zionism. Zionism is the belief that the Jewish people should have a homeland. The modern founder of Zionism was a man named Theodor Herzl, a Hungarian lawyer who helped press for the establishment of the Jewish state in Palestine. The Balfour Declaration was a letter from the British Foreign Secretary Arthur James Balfour to Lord Rothschild. In the letter he stated that the Jews may have a national homeland and it claimed that also it wouldn't affect any non-Jews in Palestine. The British and Germans let it happen because they were keen to gain sympathies within the Middle East, which in turn was the first time an area within Palestine actually had a border. The Holocaust was the mass murder of some six million European Jews, as well as members of some other persecuted groups, such as gypsies and homosexuals by the Nazi German power during the Second World War. To the anti-Semitic Nazi leader Adolf Hitler, Jews were an inferior race, a threat to German racial purity and community. After years of Nazi rule in Germany, during which Jews were consistently persecuted, Hitler's final solution, known as the Holocaust, happened under the cover of the World War, with killing centers to kill many constructed in the concentration camps of Poland. The two-state solution was the UN's resolution to end the conflict in Palestine in 1947. It decided the Jewish state would receive 56.5% of the land and the Arabs would get 43.5% of it. The idea was that both states would live under the same laws. Internationally, Israel was going to be its own nation. The War of Independence started when the Arab armies of Egypt, Syria, Jordan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and Lebanon invaded the new Jewish state. The Arab forces were significantly larger than Israel's and were better equipped. But coordination and organization were lacking and the Arab armies were not as prepared, seeking to add territory from Palestine into their own states. The Jews were well organized, disciplined, and well trained, aiding them in victory in 1949. Israel held the 5,600 square miles allotted to it by the UN Partition Plan, plus an additional 2,500 square miles. The Six-Day War happened in 1967, when Russia encouraged Egypt and Syria to mass troops along the border of Israel. Israel preemptively struck the forces surrounding the border and won, nearly doubling Israel in size. The war itself only lasted a total of six days. The Yom Kippur War was when hoping to win back territory lost to Israel during the Third Arab-Israeli War in 1967, Egyptian and Syrian forces launched a coordinated attack against Israel on Yom Kippur. That day was the holiest day in the Jewish calendar. Taking the Israel defense by surprise, um, Egyptian troops went into the Sinai Peninsula, while Syria struggled to throw occupying Israeli troops out of the Golan Heights. Israel counterattacked and recaptured the Golan Heights. A ceasefire went into effect in 1973. Intifada is an Arabic word literally meaning to shake off. It has come to be used, however, to define uprisings and rebellions. The first intifada took place from 1987 until 1993 in Palestine. It is generally believed to have been an uprising against Israeli rule and oppression in the occupied territories. It further reflected Palestinians' general loss of hope in other Arab countries and the Palestinian Liberation Organization to help them establish a Palestinian state with their leader Yasser Arafat, who helped start the first intifada. Many, if not most, Palestinians took part in some part of the intifada. Actions ranged from throwing stones and Molotov cocktails at Israeli soldiers to boycotting Israeli goods and participating in acts of civil disobedience. Israel responded to these disturbances with the use of force, detentions, curfews, and more. After years of fighting and escalations in tactics on both sides, the Intifada came to an end with the signing of the Oslo Peace Accords in which Israel and the PLO, representing Palestine, formally recognized each other. The occupied territories are Israeli occupation of Palestinian territory. The West Bank, including East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip, 
is in its fifth decade and has undercurrents of violence, abuses of fundamental human rights, and disregard, disregard for international law. Long-standing military occupation is presented by both sides. Both Israeli and Palestinian civilians continue to bear the brunt of the violence in the occupied regions. The city of Jerusalem is significant in a number of religious traditions, including Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, which consider it a holy city. Some of the most sacred places for each of these religions are found in Jerusalem, and one shared between all three is the Temple Mount, located there. Israelis and Palestinians both claim Jerusalem as their capital, as Israel maintains its primary governmental institutions there. Mahmoud Abbas is the current president of the Palestinian Authority, succeeding Yasser Arafat after his death in 2004. During his time, Abbas joined with Yasser Arafat to form the Palestinian Liberation Organization. In the aftermath of Arafat's death, Abbas was elected president of the Palestinian Authority. In his inauguration speech, Abbas called for the armed Palestinian groups to lay down their weapons, arguing that the armed conflict had yielded few results. His were not greeted with broad acceptance in the territory, sadly. He recently gained UN recognition for the PLO when they bided for statehood. Anwar al-Sadat played a significant part in recent Middle Eastern politics until his death in 1981. Sadat took Egypt through the Yom Kippur War of 1973 to the start of a diplomatic way to end the crisis within the Middle East. After the failure of Yom Kippur, Anwar al-Sadat became convinced that the only way was via diplomatic and peaceful means. The Camp David Accords Agreement between Israel and Egypt, signed on September 17, 1978, led into the following year to a peace treaty between those two countries, the first such treaty between Israel and any of its Arab neighbors, brokered by U.S. President Jimmy Carter between Israeli Prime Minister Mekhrimim Begin and al-Sadat, and officially titled The Framework for Peace in the Middle East. Ariel Sharon was the former Prime Minister of Israel who served in the military but tried to make peace later in life. He was not known to compromise with Palestinians and served as a general in his time in the military. Benjamin Netanyahu is a major leader of the Likud political party. He is a Zionist, right-wing, and nationalist. He supports the two-state nation and is concerned mostly with peace between Israel and Palestine. The West Bank Fence is a large wall that Israel argues is necessary to protect Israeli civilians from Palestinian terrorism, including the suicide bombing attacks that increased significantly during the Second Intifada. There has been a reduced number of incidents of suicide bombings within since the construction of the barrier, under construction by the State of Israel along and within the West Bank. Upon completion, the barrier's total length will be approximately 430 miles. Israel seeks to retain about 8% of the West Bank, keeping settlements adjacent to Jerusalem that are home to about 200,000 Jews. The Palestinian authorities insist that more than 400 million Palestinians whose families fled their homes just before or during Israel's 1948 war for independence are entitled to a right of return to what is now Israel. Israel opposes any return of any Palestinian refugees, fearing that the influx could give Arabs a majority of the population and lead to destruction of the Jewish state. Israeli leaders insist on explicit, explicit Palestinian recognition and the right of two peoples, Jews and Palestinians, to have separate states. Palestinian leaders have acknowledged that most refugees will not be allowed to return.